Good evening. Uh, welcome uh, this evening to our uh, budget meeting for March 28th. I'll open the meeting with declarations of pecuniary interest. Hearing none, Madam Clerk. It is moved by Councillor Rivard and seconded by Councillor Nickel. <laughs> be it resolved that the agenda for the Council budget meeting on March the 28th, 2023 be adopted as presented. Hearing all those in favor? Carried. Uh, with that, we'll uh, quickly move on to the budget presentations. Uh, this evening, we're going to start with our water and wastewater budget. For that, I'll uh, hand it over to the Chair of Water and Wastewater, Councillor Pat May. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I guess, yeah, the 223 uh, budget for water and wastewater. Uh, I'll pass it on to uh, our manager, Mr. Ming. I'll take sure. it if you don't mind, oh, uh, okay. Mr. Chair. Thanks. Um, so the way it will work here is I will give you a high level uh, information uh, and more detailed uh, financial information, the uh, more intelligent person to my right, and then more detailed technical information, uh, the more intelligent person to my further right. So, and, and that's if I can't, uh, if I can't make it through. Sewer and water or sewer or uh, water and wastewater operations, uh, as you can read, uh, encompasses uh, obviously, the uh, purification of water and the treatment of, uh, of uh, wastewater. And in that uh, as well is the uh, distribution of clean water and the collection of wastewater. The, on the water side uh, here, we have one plant, uh, and that's at the upper uh, sturgeon. Uh, makes sense. Uh, you don't want your uh, wastewater to be above your water plant. Uh, that would be bad planning. Uh, so uh, we treat the water <coughs> at the end of uh, Nipissing Street, and then it gets uh, pumped into a bunch of pipes throughout uh, the former the community of Sturgeon Falls, uh, good parts of Springer Township. And then it's piped down the uh, down the uh, highway a little bit, or actually down uh, uh, Bay Bay Road, and, and continues to Cash Bay. And so that's your uh, that's your water, uh, your wastewater. Uh, once they're finished using the clean water, it is uh, gone down a drain, and it goes to your waste treatment plant, which is at the end of Third Street. Um, makes it sound very simple, uh, but the uh, the issue is in the technical details and the amount, the capital intensive. Um, uh, nature of that business. Now, in uh, the Verner uh, community of Verner, we have a water treatment plant uh, that we own. Uh, it is on the western portion of the community, obviously along the VEV, and we have a, a wastewater treatment plant, which is a lagoon, uh, more on the eastern across, uh, right off of uh, Olivier Road. Uh, so that's basically that. Uh, in field, you have what's called a small bore uh, plant. Is that what you still call it? Yeah. That uh, treats the uh, the uh, wastewater uh, for about 40 homes. Last we checked, on around the Rock Street. So that that's the nature of what you're talking about. Very simple, uh, but not so simple. So what you have when you're looking at a bunch of roads in your urban area, wherever it is, there are sewer pipes and water pipes underneath those, and they uh, basically uh, carry clean water or wastewater uh, to to the either to the residents or away from the residents. The uh, so water and wastewater budget is fairly self-explanatory in the sense that it's fairly capital and equipment intensive, as you can see, uh, and is very regulated. So there's not a lot of wiggle room respect to uh, with respect to what is necessary uh, in, in those in this department. There is a variety of different tests or, or uh, inspections and regulations uh, that need to be followed in uh, in this area. And uh, so compliance to regulation is critical and and critical to the health and well being of our residents. I could tell you that uh, Mr. Meng and his staff have done an absolutely wonderful job here in West Nipissing uh, since his uh, hire in around 2004, uh, Mr. Meng, yes. ish. 
2003? December 2003. December 2003. So he calls me a liar for a month. <laughs> really, that's how it's going to be. Uh, but so uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Mr. Ming and uh, Mr. Remyard, who came to us from, uh, who was manager of water wastewater in North Bay and is now a manager of public works. So between the two of them, we have very certified, very qualified uh, uh, managers with uh, probably the highest level licenses that, uh, that you can have. And uh, I won't get in too much into the operation, but, you know, but that's uh, basically basically it. So this budget really is not something that is like, um, you know, community services or nice to haves. It's pretty much uh, must haves uh, to a, to a great degree. So what you have in the uh, in your uh, program is uh, where we get our revenues from. Uh, the majority of our revenues, of course, we get from uh, from our rates, and that's what we're doing right now. We are basically uh, providing, or, or we're basically uh, determining a budget, and whatever increase uh, that is necessary, the uh, the amount next year will have that a larger amount uh, going forward. Uh, interest revenue. Uh, it is uh, interesting in the sense that uh, what is other income? Pete or, or Alisa? So other other income is is um, is it's uh, the fees that we charge for water certificates for when um, when when we've got late accounts that we're rolling to tax we charge a fee on the rollover okay. that kind of thing. And the interest revenue then? is penalties and interest on on overdue accounts. On overdue accounts, what you do see is a negative uh, as well uh, because we took it upon ourselves to uh, remove the apportionment that we had back when um, uh, water and wastewater was a little bit less stable uh, and needed to be uh, adjusted and past councils have uh, thankfully done that. We uh, took the dividends from power generation and we apportioned uh, an amount uh, to water wastewater and the remainder that came to uh, our general tax uh, budget. Uh, it was reduced, I believe, last year, and with the understanding that we would reduce it further this year. So the reduction of thirty-five thousand is also an increase of thirty-five thousand uh, that you've already approved in the other budget. Okay. So there's really not a lot in the operations of this one. Uh, the salaries and wages uh, are reflecting uh, general wage increases. There's no new hires. There isn't anything that is uh, that is uh, life altering here. There's no material changes in operations. The benefits reflect that as well. Uh, the uh, amounts that you see in, under contractors. Now, one could ask why uh, contractors are still at 190 and 90. Uh, hopefully, uh, Elisa or Peter can answer that. Oh, so contractor line is, is a line that that does um, that does fluctuate. It, it just means that we, we did less of the the little repairs and maintenance. We had less water main breaks. We're doing less of the, the straight patching and that kind of thing that went on in 2020, um, 2022. I'm sure what year it is. So we just sort of take a look at what the sort of longer term use of that line has been. Um, and, and last year was sort of the anomaly in it. OK. The uh, apportionment, uh, again, we rely on historicals uh, with that. You know, we have age of infrastructure and so forth. Uh, and so historically, the amount that is there has been the amount. And so I wouldn't necessarily think that we have any room uh, to reduce uh, at that point. And, but the council can if they so wish. Um, there, uh, other than that, there really isn't anything that is uh, material. The, the majority of the expenditures, and there's no real increase in this budget, I should say, uh, it's an order of magnitude of about 2%. Uh, so uh, the sales pitch I'll give you, and I tell you what I'm selling you, is I think I mentioned to you last week, is that's what happens when you properly fund an organization and the uh, infrastructure of an organization. And so past councils bore a brunt of um, rectifying the infrastructure deficit in this, uh, in this uh, department uh, so that the 1 million, uh, I think it's on the last page here, 
uh, I'm stop. the uh, contribution uh, to reserve. The 1,175,000 has been pretty consistent over the years. There may be a need to increase uh, that uh, in, in, go in future years, but given the pressures uh, that our residents are facing in different areas, uh, we felt that we would forego that. So there really isn't any need to increase it for expenditures that we're making uh, this year. Uh, all told, I believe the expenditures that we're making, as I see, uh, as I see it this year, is we're planning on uh, doing a lot of capital work, uh, and uh, some of it is carried over from this, um, from the uh, the reserve position that this um, that this uh, organization has. But the other uh, portions, the very large portions, are from grants that we received. Uh, we can have uh, Peter uh, describe uh, to you what the, if, uh, if you if you will, Pete, what the uh, capital projects that are contemplated for for this year are. Are there any questions at this point, though? It's fairly straightforward uh, in, in terms of, you know, you you have to make expenditures here to provide sewer and water, really, <laughs> keep your infrastructure up. I, and these are just questions. Sure, for, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> on the second page, it's five hundred thousand dollars under utilities and telecommunications. What kind of expenditures? That's all. I, 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 I'm thinking it's more than cell phones. That's all. Uh, well, it, you know, it's no. I make it <laughs> about other places across the seas with cell phones. No, uh, there is a lot of monitoring. Uh, that goes on uh, with that and telecommunications and, and programmable logic controllers and, and uh, what they call SCADA equipment and so forth. But uh, Peter, how is my guessing? It's actually good. utilities and telecommunications. So utilities is the big part. It's all the hydro and it's gas hydro? And all, as well. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's also yeah. that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're very hydro intensive plants. Okay. So they have pumps, a lot of pumps. Mm -hmm. uh, at the plant that basically feeds the system, right? Okay, I just wanted to understand okay. that because it's a big number. What's the what's the breakdown between that? Just mostly, uh, mostly hydro. Um, yeah, mostly hydro. Four twenty four. Wow, it's hydro. Okay, forgot that. Other questions? We miss you. Uh, on page two, three. Uh, interest on loans. So you're actually paying three hundred thousand dollars of interest. Is that would that be right? Uh, two hundred and forty-eight thousand in uh, in twenty twenty three would be the interest on loans that we will be paying out, as I understand it. Yeah. Is this on that? Yep. Yeah. So it's going down. So our loan uh, position, maybe to answer your question more fulsomely, uh, Elisa can uh, speak to you about where we are with our loans. I could tell you that back in the day, the sewer and water uh, uh, portion of our total debt for the municipality was probably inverse from, uh, from the municipality, i.e. it was all sewer and water and the municipality's loans were less. But those were loans we needed to take out early, like in 2005 to 2010. I'm, I'm just generalizing. And uh, the uh, the uh, maturation of those loans is coming up sooner than the uh, than the municipal taxation loans. So, Elisa, if you can just speak to that, please. Yeah, and um, we, we, we show all the loans in our first municipal workbook. So if, if you got it with you, you can go back to it. On the very last page, you'll see all of our debt, including the water and sewer debt. So there is still $4.6 million of um, water and sewer debt um, outstanding. Um, they've got sort of a, a variety of interest rates. They're, they're sort of locked in in long term. They were, they were good deals when they got them. As Mr. Barbo said, uh, the, the first one, the larger one, goes back to um, kind of cleaning up some some bits of the past. The other, there's three loans. The other two are, were funding what we call Comref work that was done in downtown in 2009 and 2010, which was the storm sewer separation and, and redo of the infrastructure downtown. Um, so yes, we, we, they are significant um, 
uh, payments with you know three hundred thousand dollars of interest last year and a you know almost one point two of, of actual payments. It is a significant part of the of the budget um, until we get uh, we get those paid out. And we're paying out in 2025, 27, and twenty nine. So you know if you just you know loans one hundred one or mortgage one hundred one. When you start a loan, your interest expense are high, your principal repayment is low, and then it starts to get inverse. So the payment of that 4.6 million is much more principal. And uh, so you're gonna see the interest every year go down and that will be a buffer for you in future years as well. Any other questions before we get to the work contemplated and the amount? I just had one other question, please. So on uh, page four, um, professional fees um quite a bit over budget uh from the uh, from this year like uh this year was uh, significantly over budget was there something that happened is there any need any any reason to expect that uh that that will uh stay the same you have put the budget up a little but it's not it doesn't cover what we paid out this year so was what there was something in nature last year uh lisa or peter Sorry. No, that's fine. No, that's a good question. I'll have to go back here. Peter, do you, what were the professional fees last year? Well, a lot of the professional this it's the consulting work yeah. for a lot of the um, capital projects that we have. So that's not uh, captured as part of the no, capital, capital project? The capital. The, yeah. So this would be miscellaneous with the same consulting firms uh, doing uh, other, uh, other additional work that we didn't... Uh, it's kind of a general statement, though, but I think she probably. Hey, can you just give me a second? I'll follow yeah, just the one, the one time. So we'll we'll get back to you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Okay. Like the budget was fifteen and the spend was over forty, right. so I just. I, I can think of an anomaly was there. So there must have been a mid-year uh, consulting or professional fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Madam or Miss uh, Craddock will be uh, looking at that. So, if you can, uh, Mr. Ming, just go over your capital needs, and then we'll. We'll cut to a commercial break and have uh, Ms. Craddock tell us what that uh, is, the magic answer. So if we go to the last page on page seven. The um, capital uh, request for this year. Starting off with the Sturgeon Falls um, wastewater plant, looking for about 166,000 worth of equipment upgrades. Um, the first thing to make a comment is that the Third Falls wastewater plant was constructed in 1974. Um, so a lot of the equipment is is aged. And so we are looking at um, replacing some of the equipment that are obsolete or don't have um, replacement parts. Uh, some of the big uh, items for, for that uh, section is um, large equipment is what we call um, uh, the grinder, which which turns up the solids that make it to the plant. Um, we need to look at uh, some monitoring equipment to be replaced. Uh, we need to replace three chemical feed pumps and uh, regulatory samplers that are uh, that need to be replaced. Uh, so these these items come up to that one hundred sixty six thousand dollars that we know we need to replace. Uh, facility maintenance for ninety thousand dollars. Again, as I said, the the plant original construction was seventy four. We're looking at fifty year old concrete that's um, starting to fall apart, and so we need to um, uh, replace or refurbish um, one of our clarifiers, and that's the approximate price that um, we anticipate it's gonna it's gonna come in at. It'll be the first of four that we have to replace. So we're going to try and do one at a time. Uh, the next item that, we, that I have there is the uh, water treatment plant. Very similar situation. That plant was built in 1991. Again, a lot of original equipment still there. We have, um, we have um, automatic valves and actuators, which um, automatically open and close or adjust for, for rates. Uh, equipment is because... The equipment still works, but they are obsolete. We cannot get replacement parts. So we are looking at starting a program to start replacing these valves um, one at a time. 
Uh, we're looking at getting some uh, off the shelf spares so that we're not going to be stuck. Uh, with the COVID situation we've been having, what would have, what normally was taking us about a month to get, a month or two, took eight months. So we don't want to get stuck with um, with with uh, slow delivery of parts. So we've prioritized on uh, some of the equipment that we need to replace. Facility maintenance for 275. That's our roof. The roof of our plant was leaking, and in 2022 we replaced. Uh, we have to redo the, a third of the roof. So the remaining two thirds of the roof is going to be a, a, approximately 275. We addressed the part of the roof that last year that, ne that needed to be kept dry. It's where our chemicals were stored and we did not, well, water was leaking into the building. So we had to um, address it. The remaining sections of the water plant is where our um, water is being treated. So it's less noticeable with the water leaking into the building at those points. But nevertheless, it still needs to be done. If you want to maintain the uh, last thing we want is the roof collapsing on our water plant. Um, again, same story. The generator. We have a backup. We have a generator in the um, in the plant. 1991 vintage. Um, replacement parts are hard to come by. So the contractor that we have. Um, had already notified us that he's having a difficult time getting replacement components. And it's it was his recommendation that we look at getting a replacement generator. The uh, as I said, the components are um they're they're they don't exist anymore. Uh moving on to the Werner uh water plant. Similar situation, there's um, a valve, a major valve and a major um, sampler that needs to be replaced for that for that plant. The Werner, the, the, the water plant at Werner is also uh, early 1970s construction. And, uh, and there, again, there is 50 year old uh, components that um, we, we, we replaced a few of them, but there's still uh, old components that need to be looked at. And the water tower, <clears throat> There's two, we had it inspected last year. The amount for 470 is addressing interior repairs and installing some safety equipment that um, don't meet today's standards. And so that's an amount that we need to address um, imme uh, immediately or um, for the safety of the workers and for the uh, protection of the interior components. And in about a year and or two years from now, the bigger item is the exterior um, repairs of the of the water tower, and that's going to be in the neighborhood of, of seven hundred thousand dollars. So we're we're tackling the interior at this amount, and we have to prepare ourselves for the exterior in uh, in a few years from now. Um, and again, the water tower that's another item that we are looking at wanting to. Um, repair and maintain. As we're looking at our different alternatives of how to um, supply water to Werner, we're still gonna need the water tower. So th that's again, um, a requirement for us to invest in in uh, maintaining and refurbishing the existing water tower. Mr. May? Yes. Can, can we take a little pause? Mr. Councillor uh, Gawney, he's got a yep. question. Mr. May, uh, the tower in Werner, how, how much would it cost to replace the whole tower? You have an idea? I did not explore that. Okay. I, I can. I'll find out what what, the, what that cost would be, but I don't see it being. Uh, it will be more than one point two million dollars. Yeah, because if we do need to do exterior repairs, interior repairs this year, exterior next year, mm -hmm. the new tower would be a million dollars, maybe if possible. But no, it, it will be more than a million. Yeah, it will be more. Than yes. Okay. Thank you. I think it was uh, two three million dollars to replace that tire tower about fifteen years ago. The one in Sturgeon? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We looked at possibly a standpipe, but uh, it's it's something that we wouldn't recommend because we'd be losing, uh, if there's a power outage, you'd still lose power and then there'd be the five minutes of kicking into the generator. And if the generator fails, you lose pressure. So one of the main things of, of a water tower is to try to maintain positive pressure all the time in the community. Just that. <clears throat> 
excuse me, ask a question to follow up from that. Um, <clears throat> what's the general lifespan of a water tower? What's the age of the water tower right now? And how much will the million dollars in repairs expand, extend the life of the water tower? If it's, if it's maintained, it, we, we, it'll be, I, I don't have a date for you on that, but I, um, it's a, it's a, it's a non-moving structure. So, um, interior repairing or replacing the interior bladder uh, will just continue the, the life expect expectancy of, of, of that structure. The original tower that the original, the original water tower that we had in Sturgeon was built in the 1920s and that lasted a hundred years. And that was not, that was neglected. Okay, thank you. Uh, where are we? Uh, the pumps and lift stations. Um, a number of our lift stations, um, we're looking at, there's one lift station that needs a control panel replaced. And that is the actual price of one, one panel. It's our it's a big station that's on Bay Street. Um, it needs to be replaced because it's um, it's um, it's corroded and failing. <clears throat> the other items is equipment upgrades within the various lift stations. In Sturgeon Falls, we have 26 lift stations, and we're looking at um, uh, replacing. Um, we're looking at a project to try and install um, plugins so that we can get a generator. One of the things we're looking at is we, we haven't had an extended power outage in this community in, in the 20 years, other than two times I can think of in the 20 years. Um, when, when this occurs, we need to get vacuum trucks to come in and pump down our lift stations. What we're looking at possibly doing is converting these lift stations, some of them with a, uh, with a plug-in and get a backup generator so that we can go around to assist the vacuum trucks so that we can pump down the station to do an extended power outage. Most of the power outages that we have that last two, three hours, that's not an issue. The ones that last two, three days is the ones we're looking at. And that it doesn't happen often, but we're um, not really prepared for, for the next one other than using vacuum trucks. <coughs> so that's more of a, um, a preventive measures we're, we're, we're looking at. The next big one is the infrastructure projects. Uh, the one for John Street between Clark and Curacao, uh, it's more of a, um, uh, the road repair, road restoration, but while they're there um, addressing the, the surface, um, we need to address what's under the ground. And so that that requires um, some work with regards to the the, the sewer the sewer pipes and the, and the water main pipes. Otherwise, um, we, the last thing we want to do is uh, restore the asphalt, and <laughs> and not touch the uh, the piping um, while we're there. The next one is the water looping project. That's the main one that we received um, a grant for a couple years ago. I believe the grant was. Um, was uh, available that involved drinking water projects that were not contemplated. So there was an opportunity for us to complete a water loop. Water loop. Sturgeon Falls Water Treatment Plant has a major uh, water main that travels down Nipissing Street along the highway a little bit, crosses um, to Belanger down Third Street across Third Street to the sewer plant, crosses back the river, and then heads back up on Highway 64 and ends roughly at Cash Bay Road. That's the main, what I call the main trunk. And then we have tributaries or small water pipes that branch off to feed the rest of the community. This is an opportunity for us to have a second route to have water leave the water plant, travel down Ethel Street, and then down King Street, across John Street, and reconnect to where it terminates at um, 64 and Cashback Road. And that would, so that will complete a loop. 
So now if there's a problem with the main artery or water leaving the water plant, it can go in either direction. So right now, the way we sit without this loop, if there's a problem along that trunk, we may have to isolate that trunk and end up losing water to half the community, depending on where that issue is. With, with the completion of this loop, it gives us um, some protection so that we can provide water to the community um, without affecting, with, 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 with affecting less people if there's an issue. Okay. So that's a that's construction work that needs to be done within the next two days, and uh, that's two, days? two two years. <laughs> <laughs> two years. <laughs> We're fast. Um, yeah, and uh, again, that was funded. I believe we have to. We're covering about uh, seventeen percent. The rest of it is government. Uh, the government grant is following uh, is funding. Uh, the industrial park is, um, that was constructed back in, I think it was 2009 or 2011, sometime around there. Um, it's just a completion of that part that needs to be done. Um, the, there's a water main and sewer main um, connections that need to be completed in order to um, properly service um, all, the, all the lots that are there. And we're looking at changing two manholes. So Cache Bay is this manholes in Cache Bay. Cache Bay, we have some issues with Cache Bay where the, where there's a lot of movement. <laughs> <laughs> They're movers and shakers. It's, it's moved, it moves up and down seasonally. <laughs> uh, so yes, we are trying to tackle a couple manholes every year to um, stop them from moving during, during frost, frost heaves. And then we also looking at a um, valve exercising program, more so in 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 Werner. So, uh, we're looking at um, uh, it's again one of the things we, have, we need to go around and exercise the water valves so that we're prepared um, to make certain that the, the valves work during an emergency. And uh, also when we do. Uh, start taking part in valve exercising programs, we will break valves. So it's something to, to expect and, and uh, we need the budget for repairs. And finally, we have the fleets. Um, similar to the operators wanting the generator for uh, power outages, we're looking at a utility trailer so that we can try and put a lot of our equipment onto one trailer so that when they have to go out and attend to these lift stations, uh, we have everything uh, in one place. We have a tractor or had a tractor at the at the wastewater plant. <clears throat> that tractor was again bought sometime in the in the seventies, and it um, it lasted forty years and it failed last year. And the utility equipment for us to move heavy equipment about the um, about the uh, wastewater plant facility. Um, the truck is just a replacement truck for our fleets for the distribution collection crew. And the sweeper is in a shared cost with public works. Um, the component for the sweeper that the wastewater plant needs is, or the water plant needs, the water wastewater operation needs is the cleaning of the street valves. And um, uh, again, if, the, if we need to get to the valves and, and turn them, they're filled with sand and dirt, so we need to get them um, cleaned up with the sweeper, and I guess other maintenance works that um, that public works can assist us with. That essentially is the request for capital projects. Okay. Any questions? Let's call for you, Louis. Just really quick, the sweeper. We're not talking about a sweeper to do the streets and clean the streets like we hire a contractor, are we? I think that that. We have to ask uh, Mr. Remyard uh, exactly what sweeper does he's he's talking about. Well, the reason I'm asking oh, is it's so the reason I'm asking then because I believe I saw the other day I was watching and uh, there was a bid on a company for sweeping, mm -hmm. so that would eliminate us hiring a contractor for sweeping the roads. We still do our own a little bit, so we have our own sweeper, but the majority of our roads. I mean, when you when you do street sweeping, you have several sweepers 
go for two weeks. Yes. Uh, if we had yeah. one sweeper, we do whatever, but we still have the need for a sweeper and it isn't just used at the uh, at the time of uh, you know of spring. It is used throughout. And so you'll see them doing some cleanup uh, occasionally <clears throat> throughout. And so I think Mr. Remiard pointed out that ours is at its last leg. So it has a dual benefit of being able to pressure and, and so then it would not eliminate a contractor. Okay. It does not, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> Madame uh, Conseiller Tessier, and then uh, Madame Rochon. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the new loop construction, the 4,282,80, is that like the 17%? That's not covered by grant, or is that the total cost? That's the that's the total cost. So, if there's grants covered, yep. So when you look back at your um, the, the sorry budget portion, the capital portion down at the bottom, you'll see that you know that there's transfers coming in from reserve, and then you'll also see some funding. So that's where the grant comes in to offset the cost part. Yeah. Which which page is that? So it's uh, on page four. You'll see, um, you know, contribution from reserve, and so that's monies that were put in reserve this year and prior years, and then the funding comes in at the three point uh, three million four sixty three, um, and so, and then we've got some payments and loans, but then that that's where the funding part comes in as far as offsetting those those expenditures. So the one million one hundred seventy five is what's affecting this budget now of your seven point three million. What we're paying out of this year is a stable amount of one million one hundred and seventy five. Um so that the sweeper that's shown on the projects, that hundred and forty five thousand is the fifty percent of the cost. Yes. And the other fifty percent we've already approved. Yes. In theory. Okay. Um and then um, when I look back at uh, the capital expenditures on page four, um, the budget for this year shows us 5,963,000. But when I add the total of projects, it's 500, sorry, 5 million. 594 and change. So is that just a like a transcription error or is there something missing off the missing infrastructure projects that would account for the extra three point six million dollars? Which are you adding, Madam Mayor? Okay, uh so if you look at infrastructure projects, you got a million four two eighty two, two fifty, ten, and fifty two. Uh, under page seven on the on the two twenty three projects, and then on the um, capital expenditures infrastructure line, um, the budget actually shows as five point nine six, and the list under infrastructure oh. adds to five point. I I just wondering where I'm thinking. No, so so um, the interest. So you, you've got. Um, Infrastructure on page four. You've got infrastructure, equipment, and and fleet. Yeah. And then on the the last page, we have it, we have it broken down. But you also have the stuff that's carrying forward from prior year. Okay. That's that's included in those lines as well. Okay. 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 I get it now. So. Sorry, I just want I just want yeah, the numbers to make yeah. sense for me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the the total there. Yeah, because you were underspent last year by one point one million or whatever, right? So the actual, uh, if the infrastructure actuals for last year are 324,000 yep. and the budget was 1.4 million. Yep. So those are projects that were budgeted and paid for last year, but have not yet been completed. So, yeah, so, so some things, you know, were, were completed or done with another way, but then there are these projects at the beginning of the list. Um, you'll see at the bottom of page six, there's four hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars of, of projects that are carrying forward. Yes. Okay. They fit into, um, yeah, infrastructure facility. Okay, that's that's the four hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. I was missing. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. Thanks. 
Yeah. I'll pass it back to you, but I need to replace it. No, that's I'll go to you. Also, you call. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, back to that water main looping project. The four point three million to the face. And does that include? I know it's not part of this budget, but would there be any road work required in there as well? So then that would be seen on the public works. It's on the public budget. works site. Yeah. Then so we'll most likely see those yeah. numbers next year. We probably had some uh, yeah, issues. Well. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. So the good news is that it will be done. Yeah. That's what I, was <laughs> I think you mentioned that before, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's just because I don't think they had Ethel on the budget this year, public works. No, because of the phasing of when it's going to happen, they're looking at doing the John portion first, and then. Okay. Yeah. okay so this is strictly for that yeah. water main loop. Okay. Thanks. Go see So I don't miss you. If you go all the John Street Clark, this is just water and wastewater expenditure but at the same time since we're digging up the road we're doing this this is just for waste and water right to answer the mayor's uh, original question um, the additional was legal and it isn't legal advice or claims <clears throat> what it was was actually uh we were actually uh charged uh on uh, an issue uh, about two to three years ago, which is very debatable, uh, but that the, uh, you know, and so, and so that the MOE actually uh, laid a charge, which could have a penalty of up to 50,000 to 500,000. It was actually, we retained a very good uh, legal counsel that we, uh, we were not charged very often. I think I can name it twice. Uh, and both times in sewer and water, once in around 2003, and then this time, and the charges were dropped. So it was uh, money well spent, and that is the uh, so that was a uh, a defense lawyer's cost of negotiating and uh, fighting with MOE. I appreciate you getting that uh, information, Mr. Purple. Thank you. Um, I just yep. for you, Mr. Yep. Chair. Um, could uh, could you because and I know. Uh, Ms. Craddock has, has offered in the future to give us the Reserves 101 course. Um, but can you, can one of somebody just walk through the con transfer to reserve contribution? I just want to understand what that whole section means because I'm a little unclear and so maybe I'd like to. Do you want to do so transfer two yes. is what you're budgeting this year. So whenever you see transfer to reserve, it's that stable amount that you that affects your rates. And so in this one here, affecting your, your water wastewater rates is one million one hundred seventy-five thousand. When we started here four or five years ago, or, or twenty years ago, there was nothing being transferred, and so it was pay as you go. So you would have a problem. Uh, you know, in an area, and then oh my God! So how do you do that? So we've slowly uh, and actually, the government forced us in about 15 years ago. Uh, we started ahead of the curve, but that's where I was telling you that we had to get a system that the sewer and water pays for itself. So that is the law, and it cannot be on taxes, and that's where it's removed. So, you know, as, as in, let's say the fire department uh, has a transfer to reserve as I indicated, and then there's a uh, taken from reserve is just to show what the total expenditures of capital are going to be. Okay. So the transfer from reserve is taking out of reserve, putting it in transfer to is the one and then the addition of all of them come up. I don't know if that's complicated, but the transfer to reserve is what your uh, budget this year is is looking at. If you reduce that transfer to reserve, which I highly do not recommend, you have projects such as the uh, linking of Werner uh, and and uh, Cash Bay uh, or down the line. And there, there are some severe challenges that we all have. I would recommend uh, reducing because our capital needs would never, are, are not gonna uh, reduce. So transfer two is what you're looking at. And the contribution from reserve is the money that we're, we're taking from the reserve and putting into this budget? Yes, to pay for what they're planning on doing this year. So, yeah. okay. so to add to that, uh, 
The ending balance of the reserve right now is on page uh, six. Am I in that right? We have three three million four hundred thousand at the end of the reserve. Yep. At the end of two twenty two. Yes. So we're taking most of it. Okay. Yeah. To to answer your question, yes. So we are going to need that one point one going forward, and perhaps start looking at. Uh, increasing that, but we are looking at doing that in a smoothing way <laughs> so that with all of the things that your residents pay for, we, you know, we did not put it this year, but uh, depending on where it goes next year, uh, you know, we may be asking for a small amount additional. So we're usually every year we're putting some in, but, but this year it's in and out. Right. Plus, Yes. Uh, the three million. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, mm -hmm. that's uh, yeah, that's big. Uh, any other question? Hey, good. Yep. Are you, are you about? Well, let me just uh, add on to that. I guess from the looks of a lot of these projects, these seem like a lot of long-standing things that maybe haven't been done over the years. So this big shock maybe shouldn't come in. Year after year, right? Because oh boy, um, I think that when you get new development and new uh, new subdivisions, that's a good thing. Hopefully, the developers uh, put their infrastructure in. We've got uh, better development policies now, so that they're they're going to last a lot more. And then you know, because when we assume a subdivision, it becomes our problem: roads, ditch, sidewalks. So there's that. Where so we're we're fortunate in our new development. Um, we have done a lot of work over the last 15 years and when we speak of this calm riff the, it was separating uh the the storm water and the wastewater so when you look at all the way up here all of these streets going uh going uh, on the north side of um of uh of, uh front street there was a lot of work done it was a 10 11 million dollar project from about 2007 kind of thing and so a lot of our piping and all of that was done, was done uh, really well. And then we've been at uh, a little bit here and there, uh, down some streets, down uh, whole ditch, and you know there was water. You know, so we're doing okay. But we are an older community, as all of our communities in Northern Ontario are. We're, we're you know, we're all, you know, a hundred years old uh, and plus, and so. Yeah, there, there is some pressure on our systems. We are more fortunate than many. Our plants have been well maintained, um, and uh, that helps. Uh, the loans we have are going to assist uh, that are going to be maturing and being paid off. We'll be assisting a little bit like the policing scenario where we'll be able to perhaps look at those savings and bringing them into reserve to assist. So that 245,000 or 50, whatever it is, you know, you'll have that leeway going forward, uh, coming soon. Uh, you know, it won't happen in one shot. It'll be reduced, reduced, reduced. So you will have some leeway, but I won't suggest that we're ever out of the woods. If we were, uh, wow, that'd be great. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. I see, but I, this one's not, it's more of a lighthearted question if through you, Mr. Barber would ask Mr. Ming, but I, I know some people. I had a question to Mr. Ming. That's the first I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I myself, I'm a big fan of the sturgeon water. I go somewhere else. I don't really like the pace so much. So I, I like that we're putting money in to keep it running and good. But I do know some people in town here who complain about the cost of their water and sewer bill combined. And then they go out and they buy bottled water because they say it's not safe to drink, right? So I'd like, <laughs> I'm sure your answer already is that you would love, like, you would drink our water, so I just like to hear it. I would not drink bottled water. Yeah, no, no, I mean, <laughs> drink the town water. right? I would drink town water over bottled water. There you go. You yeah. don't know where the bottled water then uh, come from. Yeah. Right? And you it's know, not it's tested. just for the public. Uh, the uh, our water uh, uh, technicians have to test at the plant and at several locations continuously. So they test every day all over, and you cannot have any E. coli. It's like nothing. So you can't, or you shut down. So it, no, it, it is a very highly regulated, uh, and we would never allow our residents to drink the water. If, if some of you are uh, 
old enough to remember Walkerton, you fudge that, people die. And so, no, no, I, I, I echo Mr. Uh, Ming's sentiments. We, I would drink the water. No, if, if I can add, the drinking water, municipal drinking water is regulated. If anybody has any questions or concerns uh, about the quality of that water, we'd be more than happy to send an operator out to test for residuals and to test for back tea, uh, to, because we have to do that anyways, and we'd be happy to include that in, in our testing regime. Bottled water, we don't know, it's not regulated. We don't know how it's stored. I see it in the grocery stores at the nice front entrance with the sun beam hitting on it all the time. I don't know how long it's been sitting there. I don't know with if, if there's bacterial growth growing inside in, um, with the sunlight hitting it. I don't know what kind of de decomposition of the of the plastic is taking place, and it's not regulated. Mr. Ming's a chemical engineer, Waterloo. I <laughs> No, no, that, that's, that's, that's back to the vetting thing. Money's on here. I have explained this sometimes, so I really wanted to make sure that yeah. they would hear it from some professionals in the field. And yep. it is very good drinking water and high standards. Well, thank you. Yes, yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I'm back to serious. <laughs> um, I just want to understand the reserve. So, what you're saying is that um, right now the end balance in 2022 is 3.2 million. We're putting in 1.175, and then we're going to take out 4.36. So, at the end of this year, the balance in the reserve is going to be like $12,000. Is that? Yeah. Am I doing my math correctly? There? You see that that infrastructure one that's about infrastructure planning that 18,000. That's really all that's going to be left at the end of this year if, if all this work gets done in the year. Okay. Is there, I'd just like to understand why we're taking so much out of reserve and we're not trying to balance the draw from reserve with uh, 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 the, the charge the rate payer. Like, so it seems to me if, if our goal is to build up for reserve, so when we're when we come across problems that we have some money to, to fall back on, um, that it's the what what you're asking to take this year is is not a balanced approach. I, and so I just like to kind of understand why why that's the recommendation. A bit of a tag on this. So you know, Mr. Barbo did explain already a little bit that you know we're doing some of that that sort of smoothing rather than increasing this year. But the other is that this year is heavier. We're not ever going to get away from heavy. We do tend to plan our projects. We have been putting away for several years four big things that are coming. This John Street opportunity came came up to fix a really big problem mm -hmm. that's 83% funded. And so it's one of those things that we might not have been doing at this point in time, except there was an opportunity to get, you know, um, nearly $5 million worth of funding to fix a big problem that, that we have. Um, yeah, we're but you, you know, yeah, we, we we do scale our projects to what we've got put aside. Yeah. If we, if you, you, if you, and it's it's very little. You know, if you look at uh, what, what is it, six million? <clears throat> yes. You know, if you look at one point being seventy thousand dollars, if you if you want to raise uh, your, your rates an additional two to three points, uh, you know, that will be a hit on your sewer on your uh, sewer and water people. We are actually. You know, and we always have uh, kind of had the customers at, in mind as well, and uh, we're we're fine with what we will be budgeting next year in terms of capital to ensure that we're not going to be in a deficit situation. Um, but this is the time where there's an opportunity with that funding to do a lot of work that will then not this council and future councils will not need to do that work. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we're playing a little fast and loose, yes. Okay, um, and the water and wastewater uh, budget, out, as we see it here, is 100% user yes. subsidized. And how many users are on our system? Approximate, I mean. 3,500 in uh, Sturgeon and another 400. I'd say 4,000. Yeah. No, I, uh, Sturgeon Falls. Well, I use the number uh, eight, eight, uh, six thousand in Sturgeon, a thousand oh. in Springer, a thousand in Cache Bay, and a oh. thousand in Verner. 
Okay. It was only 300 or 400. You, you said home users, like people. Oh, yeah, 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 so users. people. Oh, people oh yeah, homes. I'm thinking homes. Yeah, I'm thinking homes. Like, homes. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like homes. Yeah. Divide by four. That would be my next. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's right, and we're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I want to see units, like how many people get bills, how many we're bills right. are the issues. Oh, 4,000. Okay, and um, how are multi residential units um, uh, billed, both, you know, like, Base like houses with basement suites or apartment units are is it billed per structure or is there uh, is there multiple billing for it's, multi residential? It's a per unit, so there's you know you get the the initial rate mm -hmm. that everyone gets, and then the additional unit is half that cost that gets added for all the units. Yeah. So like so if there's if there's five units, they'll get one full rate and four uh, of the additional unit rates. Right. Okay, and if there were ever, I'm sorry, I just no, it's good this to is important stuff. I think um, if there was ever um, some kind of like emergency project that came up, like you know, some like the water tower in Verner collapsed, and we had to somehow fund four million dollars. Um, what are the options when we don't have reserve, or you know, if we're going ahead? So you know, is it is it we spread it out over the entire tax base? Do we you know, has there ever been like a, a kind of a special charge for infrastructure upgrade that's outside light? So how how do you, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, There's also a general reserve. Okay. 1.9 or okay. almost 2 million. But to answer your question from a technical perspective, if the tower went down in Vern or we would be pumping uh, so the residents of Werner, uh, has indicated it wouldn't be optimal, but we would be actually uh, pump, uh, putting pressure through a pump uh, through pumping. Okay. And I guess that's where. And then we would do a really good job advocating to the upper level of government for uh, emergency funding. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I've got a question. A couple of questions. Uh, if we raise. The, the, the fee one percent. What? How much money does that uh, represent? So one percent is uh, sixty-one thousand. That's it. Eh? Okay. And is there any uh, ongoing uh, application for uh, funds from the grants and all this? <laughs> yeah. So there's a variety. It's, uh, a variety of grants. One we talked to you about is why we're doing, we're only funding one of our major projects at 17%. One of the issues with the grants is they're not necessarily dedicated to water, wastewater, they're dedicated to infrastructure. And so council, and you know, working with staff, staff make recommendations on a priority basis, uh, you know, and we provide options uh, as to what we feel will meet that grant. And a lot of those grants, uh, Councillor Pedernay, are competitive based. You're making application and sometimes you're, you're successful, sometimes you're not. We were very successful with what was called ComRIF, like 10 million. We were like the toast of the province uh, for, for, you know, for a few years. One of the problems though, is that when these uh, politicians, the present company accepted, uh, go around and make announcements, they're, they have to go around e everywhere. And so if you got your big grants here and there, uh, but you have a need for, uh, you know, uh, another project, say in field or something like that, sometimes they're going to have to give it to somebody else. So you kind of, you're not going to get every grant all the time, right? So, but we, we uh, in this instance, uh, maximize the use of our infrastructure grants. If I can add to that, sometimes the problem with uh, the water and sewer projects, and that was part of the problem with this um, one that we do have, that we're doing the John Street looping. Um, you know, it, it solves a big problem for us, but the, they have got upset limits. So they will only fund projects up to, you know, X amount. And so this, one, is, this one was a 5 million. So when we look at things like we need to fix, like the whole Werner issue, it's not going to fit into any of these bubbles really nicely, you know? Uh, a couple more uh, on page four. Going back, the, the, the 4 million we're taking from the reserve. Uh, that and going to page seven with the under the infrastructure program, the four million. So 
our portion of that four million dollars for four four point two million is seventeen percent, right? Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand why uh, it's seventeen for seventeen uh, percent of the four million. Yes. So it's not like. Uh, Oh, actually, I, I should I should uh, I should say that no, some of that four million as actually the the sanitary work which is not covered by the grant. This was only for water. Yeah, so there there is actually work in there that's not grant covered, in in that that four point two million. It only covered covered the water pipes, not the sewer pipes. Okay, so the four million is it the actual number that's. That's the actual construction for the. The phases we expect to get done this year. Okay, so it's actually more than that because if we're paying just seventeen percent of the sum of that cost, it's actually more than that. No, no, the other way around. So the the construction, the water, the the sewer, the the reconstruction is the is the total four point two million dollars. We expect to get almost three million dollars of funding. That's their eighty three percent. And the rest is yeah. We're paying seventeen seventeen percent plus the plus the sanitary that's included in there. One last question on page four: uh, services and rents. I'm just curious with like uh, the two twenty two uh, three hundred and sixty one thousand. What was that? The well, services and rents is. Um, primarily aqua. There's a little bit that we pay um, to the railway for use of their or for the railway crossing, but that's primarily our, our aqua contract in Werner. Werner is serviced by an agency, the Ontario Clean Water Agency, and it has been historically. So they're a contractor that uh, provides uh, the service and maintain and, uh, the uh, water and uh, water treatment plant and the lagoon. So that's the total cost uh, parts and all this that, that they uh, they have to fix, or is that just salaries? Or just curious. So what we budget for is their contract with us, which covers their people and the work they do there and, and things like that. And I, we budget an additional amount for just some of the small projects that that might come up. If they've got big capital things that we're doing, then we we put it down in 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 capital. Um, is there anything else with the aqua stuff, Peter? The the chemicals that yes, that they, yeah, they, oh, yeah, it, yeah. The, they're contracted out for the um, services and chemicals and so uh, the chemicals some, that keep the water clear. Yeah, okay. that that would be in that That's number. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then on the last page, you can see those are extras. Uh, the the Werner equipment um, upgrades. That's not part of the contract we have with Aqua. Twenty five thousand dollars. So, so there's a couple, there's a equipment and some pumps that need to be replaced. So yeah. That's, yeah, I remember you mentioning the, the, the two computers yes. that had to be replaced and, and there was money left from, there's numbers from all over, so it's hard to, <laughs> okay. Any other question? All right. Uh, uh, you know, we do have uh, the calculation of how it would affect your rates, uh, just so that you can see, uh, and we'll pass that out. I believe at the highest number, which is sewer and water, I believe it's a $30 increase per year. I think uh, basic year has increased today. So, um, so less uh, probably uh, getting close to half a case of beer now. Small okay, case, twelve pack. Peter, where are you on beer? Is it safe? <laughs> <laughs> has Not a lot. Has a lot of disinfecting qualities to it. <laughs> Not if it's by a window. <laughs> no, you don't want to keep the beer in the window. <laughs> So it only goes up thirty dollars a year. So that's half a percent. Mm, no, it's two percent. So if you look at the budget, it was sixty thousand. But then okay. there's no correlation between them. This okay, applies it to all the households. Yeah. Yeah.
Go see you, Nicole. Thank you. Uh, you said all the households, but this is only people that have water. So are you right. right. Okay. Yes, we pay for uh, uh, fuel beds and uh, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and wells. You want to see going in? Um, just to be clear, the sheet you just handed out, that would be a 2% increase to all the uh, that's right. rate payers for water and wastewater? Yeah, that's okay. right. Thank you very much. No more questions. That's it. All right. Pass it back to you when I'm here. Do we have a general consensus that this is acceptable so that we can move forward? It's one of those things too, where, you know, we, we like to get decisions so that we can move on getting the best price from contractors, right? So it's, we'll bring resolutions approving them. It's second scary for the reserve there. It seems like everywhere we go, we, we dip in the reserves. Well, this isn't dipping into the reserve to stabilize a rate though, because the 1.1 has stayed the same. This is going into your bank account, into your savings to pay for your assets. So, which is what it's for. That's why we have stable funding at that level. Not the same as the other tax one. I know, but just thinking of what's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, burner. Oh, yeah, if you want me to scare you, I can talk to you about the no. uh, Uchato <laughs> reconstruction and everything, yeah. Uh, we're, we've, uh, we're pretty sure we have a delegation on the uh, $15 million Champlain Bridge. You want me to continue? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I yeah. mean. Well, I'm watching your hair turn white as we speak. Now, so. so that's it, uh, Madam Mayor, and then we can, if you want to take a break now. And I think that would probably to, be suitable. We move to uh, Sullivan. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> He's looking for his dad over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I get a mover and step here for a 10 minute recess, please? Have your uh, Councilor Cushane and Councilor Kennedy. It is moved by Councilor Cushane and seconded by Councilor Santa Week at approximately 7 10 p.m. A motion to move for a 10 minute recess. All in favor?
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we'll uh, continue on with our budget presentation, uh, moving on to item 3.2, solid waste. And I will pass it on to our Chair of Environmental Services, uh, Councillor Nicole. Madam Mayor. The Environmental Services team is responsible for the management, development, and operation of all solid waste programs in West Nipissing. They manage seven landfills, landfills, the Municipal Recycling Center, as well as the recycling depots within the community. Approximately 75% of the households in West Nipissing are serviced by the curbside recycling program, with the remaining households utilizing the recycling depot program. The Environmental Services team is responsible for waste collection, waste diversion, as well as the operations and the maintenance and management of our landfills. In 2023, there are a few special projects expected to take place, such, such as landfill expansion, gate attendant building replacement, as well as multiple sites needing clearing. There are a few future goals, such as extended communication plans and continued promotion of the Recycle Coach Act, as well as continued work on the Sturgeon Falls Landfill Expansion Plan, including, but not limited to, the road access and land engineering. From here, I will pass this to any of the three of you <laughs> to take over. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, as indicated, uh, you know, basically, uh, this, de this deals with solid waste or garbage uh, collection, uh, management of uh, landfills, and Recycling again seems very simple, but they are also governed by the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. I think it's called now, uh, and uh, so they're they're also uh, highly regulated. Uh, the landfills uh, operate under; they have a license. Uh, all of them, everything that uh, that uh, landfills have, or landfills, trucks, everything they have, what's called certificates of approval. And that basically is almost like an agreement or the law by which uh, Mr. Sullivan and his team have to manage uh, the uh, solid waste uh, management. So in a landfill, and I, I say this uh, not to just uh, provide it, but for, for uh, council's benefit, for the public's benefit, but also to indicate some of the expenses that you're going to see coming up. The, uh, the landfills have what's called a an amount that they can put in landfills. And they have a variety of different uh, areas called cells that they can put in. They have very defined areas that they could put solid waste in. And then they have uh, additional land that are called attenuation zones or kind of zones that protect the environment from uh, adjacent neighbors, uh, either from garbage that blows or uh, leachate that may happen uh, under uh, underground. Uh, so they have to monitor uh, a lot of what we uh, we have and what um, Mr. Sullivan does is uh, landfill monitoring as well. And so it, it's uh, it looks very simple, uh, but there it, it's not that simple. Different landfills have different requirements for covering uh, at certain times. Uh, the smaller landfills uh, don't have to cover as often, obviously, as our uh, two larger sites. We have uh, our main site, uh, which is our Sturgeon Falls landfill, is obviously our major site. It uh, is at its uh, end of life expectancy where uh, we're putting solid waste now but we have a lot more land and we've been working at the expansion of that landfill site now for about 20 years, I guess. 20 years. Uh, and so we're at the point now where we are developing the second site or the second cell. And I think we mentioned, uh, or I may, I may have mentioned that to council before where the development of that and how we will be managing that site will be uh, somewhat different than what exists now. And I think probably to the benefit of, uh, of the public. The other things that we are doing is obviously uh, modernizing uh, for uh, not just for the sake of modernization, but really because we have to, from a health and safety perspective, we adopted, uh, so 
the, the sites that were in uh, the, form, the former townships was the Sturgeon Falls site, uh, formerly LB Landfill, uh, the uh, field site, and the Verner site. Uh, the other sites were all in unincorporated uh, townships, so they were MNR uh, sites. They were managed by MNR uh, prior to amalgamation, and they were managed by boards or corporations. This worked very well for us for many years, uh, and, uh, uh, and it kept our costs down uh, all of those years as well. What would happen was would be uh, the corporation would be uh, coming to council or to us and making a request, providing their mini budgets of what they would need in a year. And we would just provide that. And then we would provide additional support, um, you know, with respect to uh, possible grading or, or covering or so on. And it really much was a hodgepodge and varied uh, per site. We have been um, kind of forced upon us, but also it's, it's time, if you saw, if you've read the, um, uh, the uh, analysis from Mr. Poloni, I won't make the same mistake twice um, or three times or whatever. Uh, our landfill sites are at a stage that we're managing them as in the 1970s and 80s. And a lot of these sites are being closed down and uh, uh, being converted to waste transfer stations. Now, we're not doing that, but we are uh, looking at the proper management of these sites, the proper personnel at these sites. Uh, and we're in the uh, process of conversion. And we're so when we're taking them over, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing at these sites uh, to uh, modernize uh, them and make them acceptable for the future. So a lot of what you'll uh, see here are capital, uh, are capital uh, intensive. Some of the key costs as well. So the uh, two of our landfill sites are managed by uh, a corporation that uh, is a nonprofit corporation that the municipality owns, uh, but it is a separate corporation. Uh, and that's an evolution of LB Landfill, which became West Nipissing Environmental Services Limited. Uh, they send us a bill and their, their services that they offer is they take care of the, um, a portion of the recycling for us in the geographic area where there's collection. They take care of the uh, sorting and handling and uh, the transfer of the recycled material to the different uh, uh, buyers of it, I suppose, it would be would be the term. And then there'd be recycling, as, um, as uh, you indicated, Madam Chair, with respect to some of the bins uh, that we have in different locations where we don't have door-to-door -door recycling. So this corporation manages the field site and provides all the collection, a majority of the collection in the municipality that we pay for. We do have a couple contractors, uh, one in the uh, North Manetteville area uh, that has existed now for, since I've been here. Uh, and the reason that we have some garbage collection there is they don't have a landfill site uh, that they can access that's close to them. So the only solution we could provide to them was uh, uh, door to door pickup. Uh, we also have uh, collection in the Verner area, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, and then the rest is all uh, West Epsing Environmental Services. Um, if there are any questions on the operation, feel free as we're going along. Um, Elise, did you want to go through the uh, numbers so I don't uh, stumble along? I seem to be uh, losing my train of thought here. Sure. Um, we're looking at the, the 2023 um, we, we always sort of start our starting point for our revenues, um, sort of where we will actually build in 2022, which is why we started to see some, some revenues already increase. The stewardship fund is what we get uh, as part of our blue box funding. And so again, that's a number that, that's um, set by um, the, the stewardship Ontario. And so that, that amount has been, been set for us. Miscellaneous revenue typically is just the uh, tipping fees, all that kind of, not, sorry, not tipping fees. <laughs> Um, recycling fees, scrap metal, things like that fall into that. Um, HR costs, we're dealing with the collective agreement. We also are dealing with the, a, a bit of a, a shift there so that we've had, um, we've taken Living Landfill as an employee now. So we've got increased costs for that, a little bit decreased cost on the, yeah, uh, and Kipling. On the uh, contractor side. 
Um, so that's why you see a bit more in the HRR cost. Um, yeah, so contractors, and I, again, I feel like I'm sort of, sort of repeating some of the stuff because it all does tie together. So contractors, you know, uh, are contractors that do um, curbside collection for us in the communities that have curbside collection. They have the contractors that run the landfill sites for us. They're the contractors that get then that also do all that other work at the, the landfill sites. So all the, the cover and the pushing, pushing and, and snow removal. Yeah, snow removal. Snow removal has become quite a problem, actually. Yeah. Um, and and um, you know all of that all of that services. So it, it, the the big bulk of this budget is is contractors. Uh, small insurance increase like like everyone else. Materials and supplies um, covers those those other expenditures at the landfill sites that aren't aren't contractors. So when we're doing small repairs, when we're doing um, you know Cover gates material. and locks. Cover material, yeah. Sorry, thank you, uh, Mr. Sullivan. So, um, it's it, one of the part of the increase in the the current year is that we used to do the cover material kind of through the contractors. So the contractors would come with cover and do the cover, um, and so then we started separating it out this year, which is why you see the materials and supplies look so much over in 2022. We've corrected that with sort of adding some of that to 2023, so that we've actually got a line for just cover at the the landfill sites. You know, one other thing last year why there's an increase as well, and it's just to be uh, colorful here, but we seem to have people that want to go and break into our landfills all over. And it's been a real issue where we've been changing locks. We've been putting, we're, we're trying to find a, a way to catch people. And it's not just in one landfill site that's uh, known. Uh, we've been, uh, we've been uh, uh, having problems in the last year, mostly, Maybe the last couple, uh, it's, Mr. Sullivan, but last year was and Last year and this crazy. year is, is... It's like a squirt. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of uh, unplanned costs that we've had to do, fixing gates. Uh, you know, it's just been crazy. And some of the vandalism that's uh, taken place on the sites. So I just want to add that we are working on trying to find a solution. Um, so professional fees is actually just our um, consulting engineering uh, firm that does all of our monitoring, all of the, the wells, all of our plans, all of our reports, all of our surveys, keeps us compliant with uh, all the legislation that goes there. Um, we, we do use them, um, I guess it's actually in the environmental services, sorry, but the... Uh, yeah. 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 Um, hazardous waste, uh, we actually pay a, a fee to the municipality based on the number of our, based in, Keep North Bay based on the number of residents so that our residents can use the hazardous waste depot in uh, in North Bay. So that's your paints, your solvents. Yeah. yeah. So then... Okay. Um, Can, uh, oh, yeah. Councillor Gagne has a Councillor Gagne? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, what's the cost per household for hazardous waste? Do you know? Two dollars, definitely. Mm, I have to hop my head. I don't know. It looks like yeah. very low, like if it's a yeah. per household... Yeah, it's a per household rate. I, it used to be the number I had in my head used to be two dollars per household. About two dollars. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then, similar to to sort of capital, though there's there's capital as an, an expansion project that you're going to need to to come down the road. Um, what we kind of consider is sort of special projects we're, we're calling them right now because a lot of it is just the engineering and stuff that's going behind those big big projects um, a little bit of of actual sort of site clearing and the gate building but a lot of it is just that prep work for stuff as well as our our surveys at our, our small rural site i don't know <coughs> if you've got more to add on projects there well like you said the, the paperwork is what is what the bigger one is getting the engineering reports prepped and ready to do some of that stuff for Werner and sturgeon and then the gate building and, and some of the clearing is pretty standard uh, operational stuff you see some of the land clearing projects are just to make sure that we're we're, we're safe from uh, from a buffer perspective from the landfills uh and uh it's pretty standard at each one of the sites that we do yeah, and just to, just to add some of these expenditures, one of the bad news is, you know, there are some pressures, but the good news is this municipality is extremely healthy with respect to its capacity and solid waste, way, you know, way more healthy than many, most municipalities. 
we have two what we call super sites, uh, which, which should give you an expected life of uh, a long time once it's finished. Werner has been converted from a small site to a large super site. It has the capability of being uh, almost a main site in the future. Uh, so it has, uh, right now, they're, they're rated capacity, right? The small ones are what, 40? The while well, each site is different, yeah. The small sites are kind of generally at forty thousand cubic meters. Each one is different between twenty five to to thirty five thousand cubic meters in them. Um, but then Werner is, is is has quite a bit. But Werner works on a a design and operation plan that gives you a certain amount per 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 ten years kind of thing. So we have to develop these design and operation plans in sections. So we can't just go and start using the whole, the whole site at once. No, well, and you can't use the site like that all at once anyway. It's yeah. all subject to a yeah. approval from MOE. Right. So there's always applications to what's called approval branch. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, consultant work that uh, right. needs to happen. People, are we? That's that's really all I have to say about the numbers. It's it's fairly let's say it's fairly simple budget. It is very heavy in contractors. That's that's the big expense for for everything with with uh, So celebration. Jason, do you want to speak to uh, what the specifics of your projects? So um, yeah, there's just a few projects there. Again, the the Werner and Surgeon Falls is mostly the paperwork, mostly the engineering for that C of A. Uh, as Jay had mentioned, the certificate of approval that we need for the design and the operations of those sites. So they're all kind of amended as as the process goes. So a lot of those that 33 and 33 again are both for the uh, the consultant company and for the uh, the amendments to the ECAs to to continue to move into that expansion. And then also there is some some work on the ground, such as uh, for, for the road and some of the smaller things that needs to be done. Uh, capacity survey uh, is something that we're continuously doing at each site. Jay mentioned that um, each one of them have a certain maximum volume. We have some numbers out there that, that we've used historically, but we're looking to quantify these numbers to be more specific that we have. And then we'll have the baseline information telling us exactly what we have in there and then what we have left. So we've done a couple sites last year and we're doing two more this year. So once we get all that information kind of tabulated, we'll be able to present a, a pretty good case of, of what we have existing in these sites and then what we have left. Right now we have general estimates, we have ideas, but this will give us actual numbers. And we do some of this through drone, through drone surveys. So it's actually kind of kind of an interesting process. Um, Werner gate building, that's standard. He's got an old shack that's been there for, uh, I don't know, as long as some of Peter's buildings. It's just an upgrade, we need to do that. Uh, and costs have, have kind of gone quite a bit. So it's just a general 10 by 10 insulated heated building that, that he, kind of an office, I guess, a gate attendant building. And uh, and then the field in Leving again is just site clearing, and that's that's to keep the bush from from growing into the landfill, basically uh, uh, in a nutshell. So that's some of the projects that we're working on. We also have a few other little things, such as such as cameras and some of the other things that Kate had mentioned. So um, that that's the that's the gist of it. Uh, but that's on your list there. Any questions or comments? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, through you, Madam Chair. So we spoke about a little bit earlier about the Manetteville uh, contractors. So they do door-to-door -door housing of picking up garbage, is that correct? Yes. So who picks up all the garbage at those blue bins? Just in North Manetteville, there's about eight of them. And I say that only because we hunt down Dokey's Road and that's where we drop it because there's no more door-to-door on Dokey's Road, correct? Are you talking about blue bin? Do we not have any in North Manetville anymore? Well, I think he's talking about the, the on the right side where you're coming in. Right side so if right you're building? going towards the school in North Manetville? Yes. On the, on right, the right side. Yeah, that's, those aren't ours. That's actually the municipality of French River. We don't know. That's not our, oh, uh, that's yeah. not our town. We have so. So you we're dumping our garbage. So yes. Papers. Perfect. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> You strike that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a 10 second delay on this? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I think they're policing it now. Yes. And, and yeah. Because they were getting people from not from their area providing, you know, using it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, no, that's fine. That's what I wanted to know if 
<laughs> if they, if it was ours and it's not, so no, yeah, no, it's not, that's not ours. We do have the depot, the recycling depot on the left side of the community center. But yes. that's, that's strictly for recycled yeah. material. Yeah. Um, but we don't have any uh, rural depots for garbage. Okay. So we don't clean that up. That's all French River. Thank you. So just on that, so the reason we pick up is French River uh, back in the day, they amalgamated at the same time. This municipality chose to keep all of its landfills that were in its catchment areas, even except Tomico. <clears throat> Tomico was at the, ex at the end of ex its expected life, so we didn't take it. And that's why we have door to door in that area as well, for that same reason. Um, French River closed its landfill sites in that area. And it's been problematic, not only for uh, us uh, and also for them in our resorts, uh, Woolsey Bay area, it's been problematic for us. Okay. you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll just, I'll keep on that same vein. I'll have other questions in other areas, but in the North Manetteville area, uh, I was just going to mention uh, about the services provided uh, to our commercial uh, tourism operators because I know that that was an issue that was identified uh, during the campaign. So, you know, obviously their volume uh, of garbage uh, during the summertime uh, exceeds uh, what the limits are that have been put on by the contractor and I'm sure through us, through the contractor. Uh, and uh, I was just wondering if there's a way to... Uh, you know, I, I address those issues for them because obviously they're uh, they're ratepayers in the municipality, being a commercial uh, enterprises. Uh, they have needs uh, to run their their businesses, and it was identified by by several operators there that that it is a real impediment uh, to their business uh, during, uh, especially during the summer months. They said, you know, in the winter we do fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but you know, like they, uh, and now I guess, I don't know, I guess the closest for them to take your garbage is living. Um, because I think that uh, French River up until the last year, maybe year and a half, was allowing them uh, to use the landfill site in French River for a fee. Um, and because of, I think, I believe capacity issues uh, at the French River landfill site, they are no longer uh, giving that option uh, to our commercial operators. So there is kind of a gap in service there for uh, for, those, uh, for those residents and business owners. And That's exactly know. right, Your Worship. Um, and, you know, a big bad French River, but it actually is a capacity issue and a, an MOE working with them issue too going, you're going to have problems if you continue. So it is a major issue that we have and um, we don't have a solution, but it is something we're going to have to undertake mid-year or early uh, before the season starts. We're going to have to figure something out. It can't be our present supplier. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are very, we're, we're not, we have no redundancy mm -hmm. in that area as well. You know, like everything in uh, North Manetteville, when we're talking about in road maintenance or anything, it's a difficult area to manage because it's, uh, it's, it's far and there aren't a lot of private contractors or suppliers out there. Mm -hmm. One solution uh, that we can look at and explore is that uh, GFL is, I believe, contracted out now by the municipality of French River. So I'll be speaking to the CAO of uh, French River and discussing perhaps what we can do uh, down that line, because I believe GFL is going very close to some of that area. No one's going close to Doquis, though. That is going to be a problem. Um, you know that that you know it's a problem in a variety of other ways with respect to the ability to service very remote areas. Uh, so we'll have a look at how the first two or three kilometers of that road are being serviced uh, by French River, and see mm -hmm. if we can piggyback on that. Yeah, excellent. I just I just wanted to kind of identify that as a thank you. as an issue moving forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? Thank you, for you, uh, Councillor Nicol. Um, I guess looking at the uh, the budget, the focus and goal for this year, um, one that caught my eye: the review of unmanned recycling, rural recycling depot systems. Has there been any issues over the last few years that warrant a review of? The depot systems, like I'm thinking, there's some in Evian, there's some in Verner, uh, you know, in the rural areas at Manetville Community Center. So, 
Yeah, sure. We come at it from an opposite spectrum. So go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the review, I guess, is more just uh, the operation themselves, like the bins themselves reviewing, you know, how just the mechanism of the bin itself, like uh, uh, updating, upgrading paint job, kind of cleaning the thing up. So not so much, uh, you know, uh, finding out what kind of user rates we have there, how how the how, how the bins are acting, uh, you know, if people are using them correctly, things like that. So not so much changing the operations per se, but just updating the bin itself and cleaning them up. We have some bins that need some loving and some bins that need, uh, you know, need to be kind of cleaned up and moved around and, and, and updated. That was kind of the general idea. I guess the review is maybe not the best uh, the best word to use, but but uh, yeah, it, it came there. That's fine. No, I, it, you know, speaking to West Nipsing Environmental Services, I, I, one of the things I like in that uh, corporation as well is that uh, I think that they have an interest in looking at recycling, looking at maximizing uh, solid waste, and obviously for the corporation, but because they're focused in environmental, I think that uh, the you know we'll be bringing subject matters up in general as to what we can do from a policy perspective at council and bring perhaps suggestions to council. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say as a user or somebody who's a rural resident, um, in my opinion, the, from what I see with my neighbors and myself, the, the large bins that, uh, that Mr. Sullivan has put in, the roll-off bins that Mr. Sullivan has put in to the landfill sites are extremely effective and extremely well utilized and I and that should form the core uh, which it's a contained area where uh, we don't have any um, ramifications in terms of uh, uh, misuse but we will be looking at them to uh, come back I know we may be receiving something from the uh, community uh, center in living as well perhaps uh, uh, with respect to living so Thank you. Any other questions or comments? None of Thank you. Um, so I, I would imagine as a as a general top level goal, we're looking at waste diversion and things that we can do to uh, uh, lessen uh, the load on our dumps. Um, and I understand that for a municipality our size, that uh, uh, that compost program for residents is not. Uh, going to be uh, feasible, but have there been uh, other things looked at, like perhaps um, uh, 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 not subsidizing, but doing like uh, offering at, at, at cost uh, backyard composters or programs like that, that we can encourage kind of uh, new behaviors uh, uh, by our residents to try to divert uh, uh, more and more waste uh, from landfills. Yeah. And, and what else has been discussed kind of at your, uh, at your board uh, uh, for kind of new programs that we might look at implementing? Well, the majority of the discussion has been on just making our what we're presently doing as efficient as possible. We have, uh, we have done backyard composting in the past. Uh, uh, quite a bit actually it's kind of gone on the wayside for the last little while as the composters did become a little bit difficult to to get prior to covid and during all that kind of stuff so we used to always have a stack of composters here that we sold at cost um we we did some little workshops we did some programs we it's something that we can definitely look back into uh, to to getting into that kind of line of work again as well uh it doesn't take too much to buy uh, a stack of composters and sell them for for what we pay for them um other businesses do sell composters in town so you know we got we got to kind of be careful with that but uh, but it is something that we have done and, and there was success to it it just kind of did get on the wayside the last the last few years in terms of the backyard composting program but it was well received the the entire um, recycling structure in the province of Ontario is under review um, Ms. Craddock can probably spend and, and Jason can speak to it more, but it's going from a more less of a municipal control to a uh, corporate control or supplier with user producer control, producer, uh, control mechanism. And there might be some si significant changes in the governance of recycling uh, being brought before you uh, before the end of this term, 2025. So, though we want to look at uh, certain issues, I believe, uh, I have a feeling that 
recycling will be structured quite a bit different uh, going forward by the end of your term. And once uh, it gets more formal uh, with the producer, uh, we'll be bringing this forward to you. Okay. May I continue? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> It'll come back. Yeah, okay. The house are gone because it will come back to me. Any plans to kind of automate the uh, garbage collections and recycling collections? Like we see in the bigger cities, they've got the big bins and it's the arms that are collecting the garbage. That's part of right. Mr. Polini's yeah. request to try to automate a yes. bunch of stuff to be more efficient. Yes. Uh, conceptually, there are plans. Um, but, um, but not formally or specifically uh, plans yet. We haven't been uh, provided, uh, you know, that direction. That would be very um, capital intensive to make those changes, right? For, because it changes the entire system. Uh, it also, you know, the, the whole issue of the acquisition of the bins per household and that. Um, it's an excellent idea. Uh, I, I can think of, uh, I believe Sault Ste. Marie is doing it now. Um, I know in Sudbury they're not, I know in North Bay they're not, but I know in Sault Ste. Marie they're doing it. I've seen it in Southern Ontario quite, mm -hmm. quite consistently. Uh, but certainly I haven't seen it in smaller communities unless you have a lot of uh, 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 resources to begin with. But certainly, you know, it, would, it could be something on a step basis uh, to look at a run, uh, and, you know, and, and have an analysis. We would have to look at, uh, A, the cost of the machine and, you know, with the fire trucks, but that cost now. So you wouldn't be getting a used one. So you'd be looking at a $700,000 truck and then all of the larger bins that, you know, are used. So it's an excellent idea and uh, it's probably where, where we'll all end up. So it's probably something that the uh, corporation uh, could at least get some costing or some information, maybe from Sault Ste. Marie or from your association, uh, Mr. Yeah. Sullivan. For sure. If I may add, and uh, for uh, you, Mr. Sullivan, um, those stickers that when you don't follow the rules, <laughs> it starts to the weight of your garbage, and then you don't prepare recycling, it works because I did it on purpose to see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, the stickers, I wasn't mad. By you, good. but uh, congratulations to the guys. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. Good, good. And we all believe he did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, in most circumstances, they work. They work pretty good. Uh, so are, you know, they're pretty well received. Sometimes not so much, but most mm -hmm. most time. Uh, the, the waste, uh, the the entire uh, solid waste bylaw is going to be reviewed at the corp, you know, at that at the company level. Uh, even though it's our bylaw, but I think it, it needs to come back for limits and so on and so forth. There was discussion about maybe flipping uh, or, or going to every two weeks or so forth. These are all council uh, uh, levels of service discussions, but I believe that'll be an interesting policy discussion that this council will be having in the uh, fairly near future. I, I, I'd almost venture to say you'll be uh, getting uh, some draft discussions within a couple to three months. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Councilor Keller, are you still waiting? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> I've spoken already. Please let Fern go. I uh, just, just a quick question. Uh, the breaking of the gates, what's it? What rolled up or? No. Uh, <laughs> that's a good <laughs> idea. Going through the scrap metal, they're going through the electronic waste. They're 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 trying to find things to sell. Um, they're either we, we wrap a chain around the gate, they cut the lock, we built lock boxes at a at a, at a pretty decent cost. They found a way to pry those open. Um, some some sites people are just going in. You know, we've always had people go in the sites, which wasn't a major concern, but now there's. Now there's actual you know damage being done and, and continuous and it's, it's creating a lot of havoc and we'll arrive on Monday and the landfill gate will be you know left wide open which is against uh, technically against the law so so they're yeah they're 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 going into steel 
we have, we have a bylaw about this? Somebody going in? Well, it's trespassing. Well, it's trespassing and theft and, uh, yeah. It's trespassing and vandalism. We, uh, Mr. Sullivan notifies the police every time. Yeah, we have a, quite a now few. Now we're trying to creatively, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is being broadcast. Yeah. We're, trying, <laughs> we're trying to find creative ways of, uh, of uh, identifying them. They're there. Creative ways are there. Yeah. yeah. Years ago, I used to have the contract to cover the dump and burner, and people would dump at the gate. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So they pass up by hello, 100 bucks. There was a sign there. They still dump. So I added a zero. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Dumping stuff. Yes. So we'll ask you to go add a few zeros. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Um, what is the what's the size of the the fleet of garbage trucks right now that we pick up with that we own? Well, we have seven trucks that are on the road. Uh, gar we have two garbage trucks. We have uh, three recycling trucks and then uh, just a, a, another truck that's on the road. So we, we have three routes that run all week long. And those are the main, the three main trucks, the larger trucks that are on the road. And they're dual compartment? Uh, uh, the, the recycling trucks are dual compartment, correct. Yes. Okay, so the garbage gets picked up. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the garbage truck drives down the road, picks up all the garbage, and the recycling follows behind okay. with the dual compartment, Top picking one. up your containers, and then picking up your papers. Okay. Uh, but in some sections, like recycling is only every second week, right? Yeah. So in some sections, the, the recycling truck is not there that week. Okay. And um, so, uh, so the seven trucks, two garbage, three recycling, then two kind of spares. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, are they kind of staggered as far as what the expectation is as, as to when they're going to need replacement? Yeah, we have a replacement schedule uh, in place. We do. We, we've been upgrading our fleet pretty pretty well lately and the, yes they, were, they are staggered yet yeah. okay that's and actually in the corporation mm -hmm. not in the the solid waste not not in the municipal side that's in the yeah. side yeah. Yeah. but that i mean the costs still yep. come down yep. to us eventually right so um okay and then i have a couple of questions on the um sturgeon falls landfill expansion um so right now you're undertaking engineering and studies and figuring out how where when and do you have any idea on what the when is as far as when that project is going to actually start happening. Uh, Either or yesterday, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably yesterday. within probably within the next two years, it would be about a two year project. Um, you know, the MOE, uh, the, uh, we we have a terrific relationship with the uh, with the ministry, and we work well with them. Um, we are at capacity on one of the cells, so there we've worked at adjusting the C of A uh, to provide some allowances to continue, um, but uh, it won't be a forever thing. So we will be probably you'll be seeing some capital uh, next year, 2024. That's kind of my next yes. question on that is like, what is the total cost expected to be for um, the expansion of the landfill project? have a design cost, I don't have the total cost of the project. Um, three million? Yeah, 4.5 was the yeah, number. Yeah, three, three to four million. Part of, part of it, um, for those who have been uh, fortunate enough to visit it, uh, visit our landfill site, is when you see the recycling center and you see the cell, you can see it from the highway all the way up in the horizon. Uh, it's actually behind that. Uh, and so what has to happen is a, uh, is a, and there's not a, uh, where we have the land uh, with having the appropriate attenuation zones, there's not a great way to get there. Uh, so uh, what we would be, uh, and it could be quite costly and could be a bit of a risk to the public if we continue <coughs> the same method. So what we're also looking at is at the gate uh, part on the right side where you see branches and, uh, and your, uh, your metal and so forth, there's probably going to be what you see in most landfill sites now, which is a transfer station. And so what's going to happen then is uh, uh, people that are, uh, your consumers are going to be going and dumping into roll-off bins. And when they are filled, they're going to go as opposed to the public going. 
Uh, and so, and then there's there's going to be the ability to provide proper tipping fees and so forth. So that's all being designed right now, Madam Mayor. And, uh, it will be a necessity. And the, um, on the contractor's line, does that include the charge from West Nipissing Environmental Services and then the the separate contractors we have for yes. special projects? Okay. Um, and the rate revenue. So this is much like water and sewer. Um, where this is a, it's not included as your property taxes. It's right. on your tax bill under a separate line item. That's right. And it's the charge for households that get um, that the door pickup is higher than, is there still a charge for residents who are using, um, like is there still a, a charge on their tax bill if you're using a dump location like yes. here? Okay. So you have seasonal landfill use only, you okay. have residential land uh, use only. Okay. So as an example, as a descriptor, um, some most of us here uh, would have that, would be at that level your year round. Yeah. Uh, so that there's a charge and then you have the, uh, the diamond service, <laughs> which is uh, door to door, but you still have a responsibility to pay for the baseline landfill as well. And so there's, uh, we'll be showing you um, a, uh, a, uh, a breakdown of what the fee structure uh, would, would be like okay. uh, after, you know, you're, you're done delivering. Well, my questions. Hey, I am finished now. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stone. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just had a question, and it goes back to the previous budget we talked about as well. I didn't think of the question when we were talking about that, and I don't think it's a, a major one, but just looking at rate revenue, and if we look at the, the previous budget for water and wastewater, it stays the same year over year. And I'm just thinking in terms of growth in the community and new builds, and if we're building by households within those who use the system, if there's any... Um, increase there that we maybe didn't look at and i'm just asking that now because looking at rate revenue for this budget we're talking about there is a small increase to to the rates there so i just wanted to ask that question if I could. so water and sewer does work a, a little bit differently um so that we have um if, if there had been a substantial change we would get where where we're using substantial changes in our water rate revenue is we actually have a, a few um businesses that are on meter and a couple of large metered clients. And so if their usage change, it will kind of swing and we'll take a look at that. We don't add, let's say a lot of our building that goes on is not in the area serviced by um, water. So we don't necessarily see that a lot of a lot of growth year over year in the water. Absolutely if there is substantial ones we would we would go I would I would go and include it. Um, but yeah it just wouldn't whereas in solid waste we do see both the growth and we also on solid waste regularly pick up folks that were paying for landfill access only or we're paying for seasonal and they're now permits. We do pick up all those things that get picked up in in the landfill that um, you know we, we wouldn't see that kind of thing in, in the water. That was, that was, you should see an increase, though, year in, year out. That's just an anomaly. Yeah. Okay. As to where the new homes came from. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, so that was just the, the, the money part, I guess, or the budget part. I just had a question on um, the recycling and the, and the sites that we have where you self recycle. And I know a couple of years ago, probably more than a couple of years ago now, we had one at the arena in Sturgeon that was misused, I guess. <laughs> We're kind of. Lucy goosey with how they were leaving stuff there. So we took it out. How I'm just curious how the other sites are running. Are things going fairly well in terms of uh, people respecting what should go in and how it's Fair, fairly well, yes. Yeah, we do we do have community involvement at some of these places where they're they're kind of watched and, and, and we do maintain them. Uh, and we don't get the volume so things don't pile up as quickly as they would have in, at, at the large area. So in general, we we don't get the the, the misuse uh, like we had at Sturgeon. Um, we we do still get some illegal dumping at these sites for sure. It, it's 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 you get blowing around. Yeah, we get uh, we get litter litter that can be you know someone put decides to put their box right on top instead of inside, and then the next day's a storm or the next day's the plow. So they 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 do have their issues, uh, but the rural depot is how we service the areas without curbside pickup right but anything unmanned uh, anything that's uh, you know uh, has has the chance to be 
misused. And the misuse is not, it's not on per, well, I don't know, but it doesn't take much to, to, to make it look, uh, you know, to, to, to make it look bad. We, we do still get pails of oil. We do get some stuff kind of, kind of going there. I don't know what the solution to, to ending that would be. It's a uh, illegal dumping is everywhere, not only in West Nipissing, but, but everywhere. So uh, in general, they, they're, they're well received and, and, and we do keep a, a good eye on cleaning them up, but we do get some abuse of them for sure. Well, it's good to hear that it's friendly. You have a difference friendly. in tolerance. He's the easy to get along with. So, yeah. You know, I can make it sound a lot that. worse. I can answer this question a lot worse uh, if you want. I'm trying to be politically yeah. correct here, but, uh, but uh, yeah. No, that's good to hear. Right. We hope, hope residents keep yeah keep up being fairly responsible with it. Yeah. It's an important service. It is. It is. It's, it's, it's actually required. It's required that we provide that service to, to those who, who can't get curbside, right? All right. Thank you. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you mentioned for the expansion of the uh, Sturgeon Falls uh, dump would be possibly three to four million. Is there any money in the capital reserve? And if not, where is that money going to come from? This, this, um, this department doesn't run sort of capital reserves. Anyway. It does have sort of an overall reserve position. So that's on your, your page five. Um, you'll see that it's half a million dollars and not three million dollars. So um, yeah, at the time that we get there, we will we we'll look at we'll have to look at financing options, funding options, uh, you know, other other sources of, of funding in order to. Uh, There'll be green funds yeah. and that kind of thing, but we are. This is uh, to sharing with council. No, we're not trying to. This is a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you through you, Chair. Uh, I believe at one of the environmental services meetings, uh, board meetings, we discussed the average lifespan being around 25 years for a, a new site at the dump. So perhaps like following up to what Councillor Gagne mentioned, it would be a way that every year, once this new site is built as well, if we can develop some sort of budget plan to try and put some money aside in a safe fund so that we don't get hit because I'm sure this was known. 25 years ago or so, 27, whatever it may be, and maybe we could come up with a better plan as a, as a team. Just a comment or question. Yes. Absolutely. I have one more. Sorry, Councilor. Maybe I missed it. We're talking about buildings being built in 74, and I was. Born in 74, so I'm showing my age a little bit. Yeah, I think, uh, sorry, they said obsolete in age yeah. or something like that. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I was quite offended. That was, that was, that was a different department. That was a different department. It's your choice. Oh, might have been Mr. Ming, so I don't know. But I was just curious, um, I don't know if we got there yet, if we're getting there, but um, if I missed the number that we're looking at the increase for these services well we have it in a dollar value perspective mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, that is well it, it's it's approximately seven percent right now uh it's all pretty necessary i met with elisa and was able to find a point uh, that we we can defer till next year, which will be uh, in some of the uh, maintenance that Mr. Sullivan says so it would be at six uh, percent. But what's more important uh, is the distribution of the increases. Uh, we've been kind of uh, every year at council just adding uh, the increases uh, on a consistent basis, but they don't actually account for the challenges that are occurring to have cost recovery in the different areas. And so the cost recovery, uh, the, the, I have to watch that. Uh, the, the, how did I word that today? Because it was better than what I'm going to say. The, the, uh, the outlying areas, uh, uh, challenges or changes that are necessary, uh, the increases have not kept up with the management of those areas. And so, though it's uh, my recommendation is six percent, I wasn't going to walk away with seven. My recommendation is six. Uh, the the spread of that, uh, in my opinion, should be uh, a little bit more uh, 
different. Now, the, the outlying areas impact on, on those uh, increases are less because I believe there's 2,400 of the homes or something like that. It was in the 2,500, you were saying? Yeah. yeah. In the 2,000s? Okay. In the 2,000s, yeah. yeah. Versus the uh, 6,000 or 7,000 or something like that. Yeah. But if perhaps if we provide the second option, yep. the option two yep. uh, document, and, and uh, show you uh, the impact on the users. A good part of that increase, as you can see, there is a there is an increase in the charge from West Nipissing Environmental Services. And a good deal of that increase deals with wage settlements. Uh, in in that, uh, they, they, they've gotten an increase, but they also got a little bit of a parity thing. If you remember the emergency services stuff, the truck drivers and workers there were not. We, we had to make some adjustments with respect to catching them up a little bit, and we've been postponing uh, doing that for several years, where it, it would have been a a significant issue from a labor relation. So there is a hit this year because of oh, sorry, not a minute. On this uh, document that you just gave us, um, the, if you look at the curbside collection rate, that is inclusive of both curbside collection and like that's the total fee that would be charged. Pay, yeah. So residents are paying six dollars per week approximately to have their garbage picked up this garbage week. and recycling and recycling yes that's correct <laughs> yeah so those uh burly Very people efficient. and the big trucks and all of that uh yes. yeah <laughs> councillor tessier thank you uh, madam chair through you um just looking at hazardous waste uh, was there any thought of having a depot here for the residents instead of driving to the bay? Was mentioned not recently. The the uh, discussion was held probably ten years ago now. Jason, were you here? I wasn't here for that discussion. Uh, the cost that was being incurred uh, and the cost of handling a depot like that was kind of cost prohibitive. So though it's a service we want to offer, absolutely, uh, because I would uh, venture to guess that a lot of people are basically putting them in uh, opaque garbage bags and they're in our landfills, absolutely. But, but the transfer station will have that option of, right. of having a depot if, if, so, right. if so desired. So the transfer station, uh, be shy. The uh, transfer station uh, that we're contemplating in the next two years yeah. will be an evolution of that. Yeah. I'm sorry, one more question. So in addition to the, um, the Sturgeon Falls landfill expansion, um, if we examine the management structure of the four landfills that are, is it four that are operated outside of West Nipissing Environmental, uh, Leving, River Valley, Kipling, and Muskesong? Leving, no. Leving is transferred already. Okay. So it's River Valley. Uh, Muskesong, yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, Kipling's already been transferred, so it's really only living in Muskesong. Uh, um, and our intention and is, Valley. pardon me, and River Valley, and so, River Valley. Sorry, yeah, yeah. you said not living. living. Sorry, I always mix up living and River yeah. Valley, and they're very uh, different, very different mm -hmm. but similar. So the uh, it's River Valley and Muskesong. Our intention this year is to uh, look at River Valley. And just do one at a time. And how does that affect the overall operating cost? So then that, that facility would then fall under the purview of West Nipissing Environmental Services? And uh, no, no, it would be under the municipality of West Nipissing. Okay, okay. And how does that impact our yearly costs? Um, like just as, a, as an example? Approximately an HR cost and okay. an increase of about $10,000 at okay. run the site. Okay, thank you. But better quality control and... Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Back to you. So, again, it looks like it's fairly significant. 
um, but the cost on the uh, outlying areas um, are reflecting the enhancements in the uh, outlying areas as well. You know, there's additional uh, enhancements such as uh, uh, stores. What did we call it? Contractor cost. And the contractor cost as well. Uh, it's getting more difficult to find contractors for snow removal everywhere, as we know, just individual snow removal uh, and due uh, to insurances. So uh, we're, we're taking a bigger hit out there. I do have one more question. What would be the impact to the um, to the rate increases um, if we were funding the one hundred and twenty six thousand dollars of capital expenses through uh, through the rates instead of through uh, or a, a portion of it if we if we wanted to decrease the um, the draw on the reserve? So one percent is fifteen thousand. So and then the, with the revised numbers we gave, we went from 106 down to 90. What? 90. Well, 92. Yeah. 92. 92. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, I. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just thinking if we if we're if we're going into a period where we know that we're going to have a major expenditure with Sturgeon Falls, so I know it's only a hundred and. $26,000, but if we take that out of the reserve this year, um, that will leave us seventy-five ish And so I'm just trying to plan for the future. Like if, um, you know, if, if it, if decreasing our draw from reserve um, doesn't have a huge impact on, on the rates, I, I would rather plan for the fact that we know that we, if we're going to have a, Three to let's say three million, three to four million dollar expenditure in the next couple of years. I know it's not a, a huge deal, but I just would I. Right, so it's, the, it's it it smooths it a little yeah. because right now. No, you you know you're loving it, loving what you're saying from an administrative, strategic forecasting perspective. Absolutely, we also though take into consideration knowing uh, your residents and what they're willing to bear. Mm -hmm. The adjustment uh, in re realigning some of the uh, proportionment has already a fair hit, uh, which is not going to be popular. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we do think a little bit uh, for uh, for council. So as uh, Ms. Craddock indicated, one of our one of our uh, goals is to, and one of your goals uh, sounds like a, a sales pitch sucking up, but is to find green, uh, you know, FCM funding all kinds of different things. You know, we have to get on our on our bicycle and pedal on trying to find that. And then the other thing is, if you're gonna have a 25 year amortization uh, of, of a $4 million expense, while at the same time you're building it, you're not gonna be, it's not gonna be necessarily the hit you think it is. Mm -hmm. It'll be a financing hit. So yes, absolutely. If you, but uh, we just, we have to pick our spots. We've already had a very difficult uh, budget uh, that yeah. we were able to put through. We have challenges as every municipality has. And so we're uh, trusting our creativity in the next few years. Thank you. Really, thank you. I have my own question to ask if that's okay. No. <laughs> if we go with option two, Yes. This means we're not approving all of the requests Mr. Sullivan had. Out of curiosity, which ones would not be completed? The eighteen thousand you were talking to. Oh, and so it, it would. It's, it sits under the materials and supplies. So then it would just be a, a matter of, of um, you know. It's, it's not necessarily that it's it's these six projects that so Sullivan would then have just this amount of work or this amount of pool to do things like. You know, so we need to get the signs in there. So the signs were in there, but just it would just sort of limit that those little ones doing not the big projects, but just those, those little bits there. Yeah. So he uh, has to get creative as well. Yeah. Smaller signs. <laughs> Any other questions or comments?
Um, thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan, Ms. Provo, Ms. Craddock. Uh, as always, you've done a really good job of putting together the presentation, um, but also uh, your patience uh, with all of our questions uh, is really appreciated as a, as we all go through this process for the first time. Um, I guess it's uh, the same as the water and wastewater. Uh, you know, I just want to gauge council's comfort level with what's been presented. Uh, and if we're if we're at a place uh, where we're happy, uh, then uh, uh, the, the administration can come back with, uh, with resolutions for our next uh, regular meeting at council to accept uh, both the uh, water and wastewater that we're talking about. Uh, environment, what do we call this? A solid, solid waste, a solid waste <laughs> budget. Um, so uh, as for the solid waste budget, uh, is everybody uh, comfortable with what's been presented with us and if a resolution will come back here, so yes. I do have a question and maybe it's just me. Yeah. So they presented us with their budget mm -hmm. and then they presented us with option two. Yes. We haven't decided yet if we're going with option one or option two, <laughs> correct? Yeah. My question is, option two, which is fantastic, we get the, the rates from 2022 and the proposed rates for 2023 with the numbers and all that. Where what? are those numbers for yeah, options? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So we had an option. Yeah. So we're assuming that we're trying to uh, reduce the amount. And what you were presented on Friday in my preparation with Ms. Craddock uh, today, um, you know, I feel comfortable to have reduced it. So I would be recommending reducing it to try and minimize the hit on the public. The council wishes to uh, raise it. This is uh, the, the amount. No, no, but you, know, no. you presented a council saying, Louise, so you want the higher option. Right? No, I wanted both options. I was only no, saying no, once. Right. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> So those are the differences there. Yeah. yeah, it is. But I mean, at least that's what I wanted to see. So that I mean, we know there's an option one and two, but I, I haven't seen the numbers for option two. So option one. Thanks. Or yes, correct. I didn't see the one. I was going to put my hand up, but I am now chairing. So, um, and so the the difference in the in the budget is. Uh, how much removed out of the materials and supplies line? 15,000. We'll adjust the package accordingly. Uh, so, Mr. Barbo is recommending the option two. There's not a, a big difference between on the, uh, on the, on the uh, cost per user. Um, but since, uh, since Councillor St. Louis has, uh, has put it on the table, um you know we we can direct staff to proceed with the budget that was presented um or we can ask them to proceed with the slight reduction in the materials uh, uh cost line fifteen thousand dollar reduction and go with option two so um since option two is the recommendation of our staff i'll ask uh, uh which members of council would be in favor of the option two version okay there we go. But thank you for asking because it is interesting to see what, what difference that makes on the, <laughs> on the line. Um, so I guess with that, we're uh, we're finished for the evening. Um, we have one more meeting that we have to do, correct? On rates and ratios, or is that part? Can that form part of a part council? Of meeting? Yeah, that would be a part. Uh, an, an item for discussion at a regular council meeting, not a special budget meeting. Uh, so next council meeting is uh, we come today, next Tuesday at six thirty. Be here. And uh, it is moved by Councillor Rivard and seconded by Councillor Nichol. It resolved the bylaw number twenty twenty three fifty one being a bylaw of the West Nipissing Municipality to confirm the proceedings of the council at its meeting held on March twenty eighth, twenty twenty three, should come into force and take effect on the day it's passed. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Carried. It is moved by Councillor Nick, <laughs> by Councillor Ricard. We can resolve the meeting of the budget meeting of Council held on March 28, 2023. Comments? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much, everybody.